I came to Nairobi. Some people took bad reports to Bishop Kitonga. I was doing an anointing service. And uh, because there was no platform, I borrowed a chair, I removed my shoes, and stood on the chair to do the anointing service. By the grace of God, those days, everybody fell down. And some people that were there were not happy with that. They said, what is it? Why did he remove his shoes first? So they went to Archbishop, and they told him, Archbishop, if you want to save this city, you must remove a new person who has come here. He is removing shoes to access powers. And that is why Archbishop Ava Kitonga gave me 14 days to leave this city and never come back. <laughs> and uh, you know what I did? I went to my village because we have many pastors there of the redeemed gospel church who have preached with me, keshad with me, fasted with me, prayed with me. I told them, you have to gather everybody that knows Archbishop Kitonga, that knows Bishop so-and-so, Bishop so-and-so. Go to Nairobi and tell them I am not a bad man of God. And that's what they did. They made a confide to Archbishop's place. They met him and other bishops and they told him, Harrison Nanga is a good man. And that's why I'm here preaching. And later Archbishop came and told me, Mama, 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 I did not know you are a good man of God. People had told me you are one of the bad men of God that want to destroy this country. I, I appreciate you, Archbishop. God bless you very much. And um, Gashiengo, Bishop Gashiengo, who has just come from here, is the chairman of our elders here in this city. If you want to access our, the old men of God, uh, who have preached in this city for many years, uh, go through Bishop Gashiengo, and uh, you will access them. God has given that grace to him right now, and he is doing a very good job of bringing together our fathers. Some of our fathers are forced to resign, and they have nothing to eat. Some of our fathers uh, are still preaching, but they are now frail in health, and he has brought them together. May God bless you very much. Hallelujah. And uh, without doubt, we have Apostle Kimani here with us, the man of God who God has lifted. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you, Apostle Juma. Thank you, woman of God. Thank you, Apostle Suna, the team that walked with me in the journey. Uh, Apostle, uh, Apostle Suna, uh, Kathy, uh, uh, Maggie, Apostle Maggie, uh, our dear Bishop from Narok, uh -huh. And the man of God who has just left here, Luce Wangojiri. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The big team, the big team. Uh, God bless you very much. I want to just take a short, uh, a few minutes to speak about uh, Thanksgiving. And first I would like to say uh, that thank Thanksgiving releases the miraculous. Why do I say that Thanksgiving releases the miraculous? Uh, because I see it in the Bible. That when Jesus Christ was here on earth, he was faced, by, he was faced with a very uh, difficult situation. He had to give about 7,000 people lunch. And as you know, he had no money. You remember the last time he needed money. He had to perform a miracle uh, through a fish. Kuna watu wanasema hapa hawezi ati unajua sasa mimi mungu sina pesa ni naona kama unume ni washiria. Mungu mwenyewe alikuwa hapa na hana pesa. Haka itishu wa kodi. Haka sema sasa Simon Peter tumekamatua. Tutatua kodi wapi. Simon Peter haka sema sasa hii watu najalibu kuwabia wewe diye mungu hawachiki. So he had to perform a quick miracle. Go to the water. Shukua samaki ya kwanza. Dani yake utapata pesa ulipe kodi yetu na yangu. So Jesus also paid taxes. I wonder why the church people feel bad when paying taxes if our own savior, Lord Jesus Christ, paid taxes. I can see you are guilty man of God. You don't pay taxes. Please pay taxes. Don't say that me, I'm an, I'm, as an anointed man of God, I should not be told to bed. Please, Jesus himself 
the owner of the anointing. Not the anointed one. The owner. <laughs> did he not argue with the tax collectors? He did not tell them, do you know I can finish you within a minute? Do you know I can say, go and you are, you are, you are never seen again? Instead, he told them, give me two minutes. I organize a miracle uh, to pay the taxes. Now, in the book of Mark, chapter 8, I will read those ones then. I will speak about Ben Hinn and what happened there. In, in the book of, um, uh, in the book of um, Mark, chapter 8, uh, verse 1 to 9, there is a story that happened here on earth when Jesus was here with us. He was faced with a, 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 a situation that needed urgent intervention. The Bible says during those days, um, another large crowd gathered since they, they had nothing to eat. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days of nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way because some of them have come long distance. Uh, preachers, I think we can get that one, that you can organize a three-day event without logistics. Isn't it? Yeah, it was a three-day event. No logistics. Even Jesus himself did not eat. There was no water. So if you see us organizing a crusade, please stop criticizing us. Our, our father did not uh, have logistics when he organized a three-day meeting. Until the disciples came and told him, now, uh, some of these women here and men cannot do more than three days. Already they look fail, already they are not working very well. And, and uh, uh, Jesus told them, let's give them something to eat. The disciples answered, but why in this remote place can anyone get enough bread to feed them? How many loaves do you have? They said seven. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. When he had taken the seven loaves and given thanks, do you see that? If it was me and Obonyo who had seven loaves to give you, I tell you the prayers we could have prayed with this man of God. First, we could have done prayers of biding. We bide you, devil. We know you are around here. <laughs> then we would say, multiply the name, multiply, multiply, But Jesus did what? When he had taken the seven loaves, you know, you know, I, I tried to do it one day, and I was tempted to think, just saying, Lord, I thank you for these seven loaves. I should add, and uh, I commanded the devil not to interfere with what God is doing right now. But, but he did not even mention the devil. He gave. Do you know the word giving is something that you have, that has been put in your life, and God expects you to give it to him. When we talk about giving, we talk about, um, uh, we talk about giving finances. But there is another giving. Giving thanks. Inside you, it's supposed to distribute to the people, and they did so. I would like to say, to say that in my life, I have only experienced once where a food in our house uh, me and my wife, we were in the house, and um, some people came suddenly into our house. About, 50, uh, about 20 or 25 people came. I asked them, where are you going? They said we were in a wedding here. And uh, somebody said that we should, uh, uh, that we should uh, come here because we are the only pastor around here. We spend our night here. I was shocked. We already had some maize cobs there. We had give, been given some maize as an offering where we had gone to preach. So they got in. Within a few minutes, they lost all the maize and it was over. And I heard some of, of them saying, what are we going to be given as supper? I said, God, what are we going to do here? You did something in those days. Do it today. Amen. I'd like to say that I saw a miracle that I, I discovered it was a miracle after. Because we had a few chapatis. And I said that he should cut them up and give each a piece. Then I heard the lady saying, but the chapatis are not getting over. I heard 
them, what do you mean? They said, but the chapatis, I wish I shook. So, Simeanza kuongeswa. And I saw the until the man said, Musina the chapati zikina. And there was no chapati in that house. I called my wife and told her, Zile chapati, Zime. Kuwa nyingi mpaka wazema, amesema zisi yongeswe. We shook. Even in the morning, I was telling God, Am I worthy to see the miracle you did in those days in my own house? By thanking God and using the rarely used prayer of thanking God. We use many prayers, but thanking God is one of the major prayers in the Bible. And Jesus used it accordingly. You remember when Lazarus was dead? That is a prayer he used. Thank you, Lord. I know you hear me. And even now you can hear me. Lazarus, come out. If it was me, first it is to bite the death. Death, I come against you. But Jesus just said, I thank you, Lord. I know you hear me. I, I want to get to that level of faith. I just say, thank you, Lord. Now, uh, those things. For those who don't know what Benin did in our country, he released the miraculous in this nation. We are seeing things we have never seen. I remember the other Sunday, last Sunday but one, there was a woman in our church. After, the, she, after a prayer was made for the sick, she, we said, anybody who has been touched by the power of God and is healed, come here. And she came and said, they said, I can hear. So we asked her which ear was brought. Her sister said she has never heard since she was born, this one. That was my first time after some long time to see a deaf person coming to the church. Nobody touches them and they hear clearly. Amen. So we, are, we, 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 we have been learning churches in um, crossed heaven. It was closed because of some sins that were done in this country. And so when we gathered together, we agreed because these sins were international, we should repent them at that level, the international level. And that is why we got somebody from the international level. We came and through him, we repented the sins we had done to the international community. And God heard our prayers. And now the heaven is opened. I saw Apostle Subi. I saw Apostle Subi showing us pictures of somebody who was healed instantly and they were lifting up their crutches very high and I said, God, you have come. I heard Apostle Maggie telling us of miracles that happened in the value ceremony and they turned the value ceremony into a crusade. And very many people came to, be, to believe Jesus because I always say in Kiswahili, Mio Jisa Hutetea Ijiri. Amen. Na mimi huwa naambia wahubiri wale wamefinyika kifedha. Fufua mtu. Uona gari zile utakuwa nazo hapo mpaka basi na maroli. Ni vile hakuna kitu unafanya special ni kuogea sana. Wewe fanya kitu uone vile kutakwenda. Amen. Mtu hana mugu ime. Hata mimi nitakuja kwako saa hiyo ingine. Nione huyo kijana ambaye anafanya miguu ime. Lakini sasa ni kuongea tu uh, Greek, Hebrew, Kikuyu, Kiswahili, compare, let's sing. We can't come. Wasa ni wasana na hiyo. In Psalms 100, I, I think you are all familiar with the Psalms 100. It says, enter his gates with when you tell God thank you, and you learn to tell him thank you, thank you, the, 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 there is a, uh, a psalm that speaks about thanking God, thank you for life, thank you for health, thank you because I'm breathing. I even am thanking God for this team that I've just mentioned here together with Apostle, uh, Apostle Subi, uh, Lefred Kisotu. Lefred Kisotu was our commander. And he did a very good work of commanding us here and there. And uh, we were very punctual. And uh, he taught us how to keep time. This is the man who taught us to keep time because we in Kenya, especially we pastors, we don't like to be tusukumo esana. Ukituambia saamonja, ni saabili na nusu. This man made sure saamonja, ni saamonja. 
I want to thank God that nobody became sick. Nobody among us did become sick. Nobody among us had any challenge. We pushed the thing until that last day when it was late. And I want to thank God that rain came. I was asking Benin, what are we going to do now? It has started raining. Uh, and he will tell me it is going to stop shortly. Don't worry. <laughs> and the first day when he came to Jomo Kenyatta Airport, Benin said, are you aware it is going to rain tomorrow? I think some of us who are with him, you heard him say that. Apostle Subi, that's what he said. We were with Kisoto there. He said, are you aware it is going to rain tomorrow? We told him it has not rained for some time, so it is not going to rain. So that is why you heard him here on the microphone saying, I told you it is going to rain. What did you say, you people? We said, we are very sorry, because it was raining. And then he said, tomorrow it will not rain. On a Monday, he told me, it is going to rain a bit. But that is a rain to say, he has returned his glory to the pastors. <laughs> Amen. Uh, enter his gates with the thanks giving. What is a gate? A gate is something that prevents beautiful good things from being stolen. In heaven, we have gates. I believe long ago when the devil had not been cast here, heaven had no gates. But now it has gates. It is like Kenya. Most police stations did not have gates. But because of uh, the enemies, all police stations have gates. A gate is a barrier that prevents somebody from getting access to something they need. And according to the writer of the book of Psalm, that is David, the only thing where you can access those things behind the gate is not by using a key and a rock. It is not by breaking the gate. It is by doing what? Thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, opens gates. Thank you, Lord, opens gates. Many people are not thankful. Many people want just to ask and beg and ask and beg. We have very people, a few people who can say, Lord, today I will thank you. Even sometimes I say it in the church, can we take some time and thank God? We thanked him just for a minute. Thank you. We had no microphones, we had no things, so I could hear what people are saying. Say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Father, remember that money. You, you only did it today in Jesus' name. Father, the, the devil is just on me. But we had said, let's thank God, because the language of thanking is hidden. And uh, the only way we can access those gates that are um, before us and they are closed is through thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you, God. I will get a wife. Thank you, God, for the wife that will come in my way. Thank you, Lord, for the car. Uh, there's a day I told the, our church that God is going to give me a four-wheel drive car. They were very quiet because already the little Toyota Corolla car that I was having was giving, the, was giving them fuel problems. Sasa wakazema, four-wheel drive, sasa itakuwa na mnagani. And I told them, can we hold hands and thank God? And we told God, thank you for the, uh, the, the four-wheel drive car. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Then we ended the night. After three months, somebody came and asked me, you refused to bite the devil. You did not say anything like this and this and this. You just thanked God. Where is the car? And as we were speaking, somebody walked in and told me, do you know I have, uh, I ordered a car from Japan, a four-wheel drive car, and it has arrived in Mombasa. Can you car go and shake it up? That is what you can get from Thanksgiving. <laughs> Amen. And we should thank God that Ben Hinn was able to come to Kenya. I, I remember all those negative voices that were saying that Kenya cannot be able to hold a pastor of a caliber of Ben Hinn. That we can only hold local things here. That we are, we are people, who, uh, even a mighty preacher, one of the mighty preachers in this land, in, in another country said that the way I've seen Kenyans, they cannot be able to host uh, a meeting of Ben Hinn. Why should I, I thank God that we held that meeting? And it was a success. And uh, w w what do you think I would feel when I tuned into Ben Hinn program in America and I would hear him take 10 minutes to speak about Kenya? Hallelujah. 
And Ben-Hin was also able, the man of God, we know that the man of God's uh, feet is different from ordinary people's feet. Alienda kakanyanga na migu yake state house yet. Na kaingia huko na kaibaliki na kasema maneno mazuli juu ya state house, na juu ya president. Praise the name of the Lord. What else do men want? We should thank God. We should tell him thank you because of breathing. If you look at the breathing system of a human being, you, know, you can know that breathing is a miracle. If you look at the, uh, uh, how, how God has made us fearfully and wonderfully, then you would know that we should thank him every day. And I normally say this, if you can't see God in an insect, you cannot see God in an elephant. You must first see God in the little matters of your life. Then you will see him in the big matters of life. You must see God in waking up, sleeping, and waking up well. Those little insect matters, we must first see God there before we see him in another, in an elephant. Please, the name of the Lord. I conclude those few minutes by saying, Thanksgiving that was done in the biblical days that was major was done by Miriam and Moses when they crossed the Red Sea. If you read the book of Exodus, you will see the things they said. Miriam sang a song together with Moses. And God declared that when the kingdom of God will come back, we will sing the song of Moses. I think the church should learn the song of Moses to avoid huming along with the other church members when the kingdom comes. Mana imeadikuwa tutaiba wibo ya Musa. Na nyinyi hamujifudishi nyibo ya Musa. Tutaenda hapo tuambiwe Kenyans hawaibi nyibo ya Musa. Tukisema tuma. And the song of Moses. That song of Moses is full of thanking God. Telling him thank you. Because they saw the Pharaoh coming. They saw the army. They saw the, the, the water. And God suddenly makes a way for them. They sang songs that God said, Iyo wibo vile imeibwa, Iyo wangu kikuja nataka ibwe. Iyo diyo national anthem. Ya mfarmu wa mfarme. Mungu wa biguni. The other person who made thanksgiving very well in the Bible is Mary. Mary, when she was told, among all the virgins in Israel, among all the women in the world, she is going to give birth to the Son of God. The Bible says, and Mary prophesied. And her prophecy is full of, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now the people who laughed at me. Now those things that I feared. The other woman who did very good thanksgiving was Hannah. In the book of 1 Samuel, uh, chapter 2. You can see, after Hannah conceived the prophet Samuel, the Bible speaks about her thanksgiving. And it became even one of the Psalms in the Bible. She thanked God and she said, Now, Lord, the enemies opened their big mouth against me. And now you have also enlarged my mouth. When we thank God, our mouth becomes bigger. And I want to assure our first lady here that now the church has a bigger mouth than before. Isn't it? Can I just want to make it look at that scripture? Because I, may, I, I don't want to misquote it. Uh, first Samuel chapter uh, chapter 2 uh, and verse 1. The words of Hannah. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted. My mouth is enlarged. Modomo imepanuka. Wacha ni wambia modomo ya kanisa. Imekua kubwa. Hallelujah. Hava haja kua kubwa. Ya sasa tukisema Shiringi ya Kenya imeanguka kwa sababu ya maombi. Kerele sio nyingi kama bereni. Bereni tukiabiwa nyamaseni. Lakini si hata wazungu walishidwa kwa explain shiringi imefanya nini. It is God. We thank him. We thank God for that. Amen. And, uh, and we say, as I conclude, let me say, because our mouth has become large, to see your gavi by a mana tuko na kinywa kikubwa. God used three people to rule this world. The king, the priest, and the prophet. Those three people. The king, the priest, the prophet. 
Those are the three people that ruled this world from the beginning. Even in the times of Jesus. And when Jesus came, the Bible speaks about he gave some to be prophets. When Jesus came, he gave some to be pastors. When Jesus came, he told us, honor the king. And that is why today, this meeting is bringing together the three offices again. The king, the prophets, and the priests. Na fiongosu wa ibada, nikependa kuambia hivi, fiongosu wa ibada tukikutana kamkutano kama hii, musifinyiri yange manabi, mukubali watabiri. Watuambie vile wanasikia kutoka biguni. Mana tumesikiliza waibaji, tumesikiliza wahubiri, tumesikiliza wananaji, manabi wako wapi. Na wako hapa na wanaeza kuongea. Let's be giving them chance to speak. Hata wakituambia tumekaa vibaya, tutalekebisha. Amen. God bless you. Let's stand up and pray as I conclude uh, my little time is gone. Uh, Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for our first lady, her excellency Rachel Ruto. What she said, she had heard from you. We are witnesses. And you accomplished what you put in her heart together with the national altar. We bless her before your presence. And we pray that you will give her peace in her office, peace in her family, and peace in everything that she does. Because we have discovered you have given her an ear. Umempatia sikio. Na hiyo sikio hatutaki rifanyiwe makerere. Tunataka edire kusikia mungu wa nasema nini. Bless her Lord. Give her good health. Let nothing bad happen to her family that would cause her not to hear you. Give peace to the president, Lord. Let nothing bad happen to the president. That, Lord, they may continue hearing your voice. In the name of Jesus, we pray for new ideas to the presidents, new revelation to his, to his excellency. We pray for our pastor. Her Excellency Dorocas, you have given her a very big burden for the disadvantaged in the society. Help her, Lord. We know without help, David would not have been what he was. But the Bible says that David was greatly helped. Give her help us. That we will stand with her and complete her vision. Lord, we don't want, we don't know what to say when we have two mothers in the highest offices and they are born again we thank you we thank you lord for them when lord we have a president who can clearly say Buana we have nothing to say but to tell you thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord When we hear the deputy president in church meetings, we don't take it as just a normal thing, Lord. We tell you thank you. Thank you for this nation. Thank you for these people, Lord. Thank you for the men and women in this place, Lord. Thank you for the prophets in this country. Thank you for the pastors in this country. Thank you for the archbishops in this country. Thank you for the elders of the church in this country. Thank you for the church in Kenya, oh God. Father, we thank you for the Leverage Kisoto. He coordinated the great men of God without fear. Men that would cast him at an instant. You gave him wisdom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Apostle Subi. He made us fast the way we have never fasted before. Thank you for your servants, Lord, that led the choir. That led, oh God, the ushers. Thank you, Lord, for those that read the, the, the advertisements. Thank you for the homeboys that brought everything to be modernized, everything to be acceptable, the sound, everything. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for everyone. Father, we thank you for Ben Hinn for coming to Kenya. Even when he had very strange voices, he still came to Kenya. Thank you for him, Lord. 
Thank you for the president. He sat in the meeting until the night. Thank you for the first lady. Because Lord, she stayed with us there. Blessed the cold. To get the blessing for Kenya. Thank you for the... Her Excellency Pastor Dorcas, Lord. For coming with her husband. Father, we thank you for everybody that came. These men and women who came here. We thank you for the protocol teams. Thank you for the ushers. Thank you for everybody that made this event be what it was. And Lord, we want to tell you, our hearts are touched. Miracles are happening. You are visiting us, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. And the Lord is saying, I have opened a very wide door for Kenya. I have opened a very wide door for Kenyan church. And the Kenyan church will be respected the whole world. I have opened a wide door that whatever you say will be accepted. I have made you to be accepted in the, in the neighboring countries. I have given you a big mouth as the world has said. In Jesus name. God bless you. Let's take our seats. Amen. We give you all.